All right. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Fit CEO podcast with your host, Chad. And we have an amazing guest on today. His name is Rob. He's one of our amazing NLCA students, and he is going to share his journey as an entrepreneur and a student in NLCA. Rob, to get us kickstarted, give us the 30, 30 to 60 second background on you, and then we'll dive in. Oh, my goodness. 30 seconds. Um, I had bariatric surgery in 2020. Before that, I weighed 365 pounds and I pretty much had a life-changing surgery that helped me get down to my lowest weight at 210. Uh, at 210, I started to focus on lifting and nutrition and really made it a huge part of my life and loved it um, and would be helping people on Instagram with advice in the bariatric community. Uh, which led me to kind of start my own coaching process and then get involved with NLCA. So that's, that, that's been me for the last three years in about 30 seconds. Yeah, that's freaking awesome, man. That's super impactful. Before we dive into anything business, I mean, obviously that's a significant amount of weight to lose and I'm sure you've learned a lot yes. uh, through that process. What are what are some of the biggest things you feel like you've learned and taken away from from that growth process of your life? Um, I think for me, it's that you get whatever you put into it. Um, a lot of it is mindset work and this idea that if you really want to have success in anything in life, you really do have to work and rely on yourself mainly. Um, it's one of those things that I'm constantly working on. How can I improve? How can I get better? Uh, through NLCA, I was able to kind of really change a lot of my mindset of what I wanted to be as a coach and what would be a great coaching experience. So I feel like when I work with clients and what I've gotten from my life is if you go and get the right help, you can achieve a lot of things you can't even imagine. So it's been a roller coaster of three years that I, every day I wake up and I can't believe where I'm at. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's dive into that a little bit. Like I said, there's never an agenda for this podcast. We just yeah. kind of go, go wherever. And, I, wherever and I'm a talker. So this is going to go wherever you want, <laughs> wherever. So. You said, uh, I picked something up when you mentioned mindset, you said that you learn to rely on yourself. Uh, that's something that I feel like a lot of individuals who are struggling to be successful in any area of their life, uh, haven't grasped that concept yet. Uh, dive deeper on that concept. Cause I think that's a, a huge one. So like, let's go back to the whole thing of me getting bariatric surgery. For a lot of people, they think that uh, when you get bariatric surgery, and for those who don't know, you get 80% of your stomach removed in the procedure I had. So my stomach is about the size of a small fist. Well, as time goes on, that fist expands and you can eat more and you have less restriction. So a lot of the times where you see people struggle after bariatric surgery is they believe that the sleeve's going to do all the work for you and that you really have to do nothing. Uh, from my experience, I realized that although that is a great tool, you really have to change your lifestyle and your mindset. And until you work on your mindset and your lifestyle, it doesn't matter what tools you put in place. So one of the things when I work with other coaches or when I work with clients, I really try to teach them that, yes, I'm here to help you for a certain part, but we really do have to build the mindset and lifestyle to make sure that you're successful. Mm, that's huge. That's huge. And I, I, I'm sure you've had many... Uh, moments in your entrepreneur journey where you've noticed that that mindset of like, hey, I need to rely on myself has carried over, which is awesome. The other thing that I picked up that you said is that because of being an NLCA student, you've even changed your coaching experience with your clients. What are some of the big things that you've changed and, and taken away? So I think it's just, um, it really does come down to you have to set goals. And uh, one of the things I really struggled with coming in was having limiting beliefs. Um, when I looked at my first kickoff call notes before we got on here, a uh, number of clients that I thought I was going to have at my biggest was going to be eight clients. Um, I've surpassed that. Uh, exactly. But it's just one of those of you don't know what you're capable of until the right people kind of show you the path. And it was one of those things that when I got into NLCA, you gave me the blueprints, but I ultimately have to build it myself. I think a lot of the times when people get involved in coaching or when they get involved in programs, they think like, oh, someone's going to do it all for you. Whereas if you really want to be successful and you really want to build success, you almost need to have the blueprints and do it yourself. And because I've had that feeling of ownership throughout my entire business, I know that I own my data. I own my results. I own the number of clients I get. And it's just something that I try to teach my clients as well as like, yes, I'm your coach and I'm going to show you how to do it and I'm going to help you do it. But ultimately, until you take ownership and do it yourself, you're not going to get the results that you want. 
already have my title for this podcast. It's going to be something around taking ownership or relying on yourself because we keep coming back to this theme, which is great. So well, this has been a great episode. I'm probably not going to say anything more profound than that. So I want to thank everyone <laughs> for having me on. Yeah. So <laughs> let's really quick, we're going to get into your story here, but just for context, you said that you were going to have eight clients by the time that you were done with NLCA. How many clients do you have right now? I'm at 23. Hey, let's go. So you like 4X that goal, huh? I 4X that goal. I'm starting to wait list out. Um, I know for a lot of people, their goal is to quit their day job, but I'm a teacher and I really do love my day job. I just really wanted to get into coaching because this is a passion project, but it is something that obviously can supplement my income and be something that I can do in the summertime when I have off. So like, instead of having to work a meaningless job in the summer, what's been rewarding for me is I opened up my own bariatric summer camp to help bariatric clients with fitness and nutrition goals in the months that I'm off and I get to work from home. Uh, I sold it out within a month um, and I'm at exactly where I want to be and I'm happy with everything I'm doing. So let's go. Air yeah. high five, man. That's all. Awesome. That's awesome. So, all right, let's start getting into the entrepreneur journey here. Cause like you mentioned, you're, you're a teacher. That's, that's your nine to five job. That's your day job. What even sparked the consideration of wanting to get into online fitness coaching? So, um, in the bariatric community, uh, they have a bariatric award show, the just be you bariatric awards. And I actually won an award for best men's fitness and for best men's Instagram account. And it was one of those of like, literally me just showing people, here's how you lift at the gym. Here's kind of what I do. Here's how you track macros. And everyone kept saying, you should probably get into coaching. So it was one of those that I started to look into it. Um, I don't think you might've remembered this, but you were actually still taking uh, like clarity calls in the beginning. Yeah. When I, I first went on and I, you had me for yeah, one. And I remember, I remember I liked this program. I could not afford it. So it was literally one where I had the numbers, I went on and I saved, I worked parking lot duty, I taught an extra class, I got really resourceful of what I could do to get the initial payment down. And even after that, like I saved up Christmas money, I saved up birthday, holiday, had to go to my wife and be like, hey, you know, it'd be easier than going out and Christmas shopping and birthday shopping. What if you gave me part of my tuition to NLCA? And it was one of those that I even went to my parents and everyone. And they're like, look, instead of getting me a holiday sweater, what if you paid part of my tuition at NLCA? I scraped together enough to get the half payment up front. And then I did the payment plan for the rest of it. And I said, I'm just going to have to get resourceful. I'm going to have to put everything into this. And I'm going to have to throw every spare minute I have to get it. Um, and I was really excited. I started January 15th and... By March, I had paid off the remainder of my tuition through the uh, clients that I had signed, the coaching calls and all that. Let's go. I knew I took your call. I knew I yes. took your call. Yes. And uh, once again, I mean, this all comes back to, like you said, uh, taking control of your own life because you used a word that I like to use a lot, uh, specifically on those sales calls that you mentioned, the word resourceful. And yes. I think the difference between people who are successful and aren't successful is their ability to get resourceful towards their goals. Why, why were you so resourceful? I mean, you were talking about doing a lot of different things to make this work. What, what was the inspiration behind that resourcefulness? So going back through my experience, um, you know, when I look at my life three years ago, I was over 365 pounds and I was over in six figures of debt between grad school, poor spending and everything else. So I literally changed my life around and decided I was going to get myself fit and I was going to be fiscally fit as well. So one of the things that I refused to do was I was not going to go into debt going into NLCA, but I was going to find ways to make this work. And that meant that I literally would be chaperoning dances, uh, coming in early and uh, helping buses get off. I worked early. I worked Saturdays. I did everything possible while still operating the house expenses and then saving literally in like a Star Wars piggy bank the cash that I would make in overtime. And when I had enough to put the initial deposit down, I came back to NLCA and was like, look, I have this, I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna do whatever I can to get it to work. And it was one of those that like, I didn't realize what I bit off when I chewed. When I started, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I needed to open up an LLC. I had to get an employee ID number. I had to pass the personal training and nutrition modules. I had to figure out how do I actually set up all these online things? Um, so the first two weeks, I think I completed like six modules just because I realized every minute that I was going, I knew I had to make another payment on the 15th. Yeah. So 
it was one of those um, two people came into my group before me and they had put their posts up and I realized like, I didn't even put my introduction post. So I put my notes on. Um, I put my initial post up on February 7th. I had signed two clients paid in full by February uh, 11th. So seven, history teacher, not math. So I'm counting on my four, fingers four for those of you who watch four. Yeah. Um, but within four days, I had two paid in full and it just, I started the snowball. So it uh, was one of those, I would DM, I would make sure that uh, on my Instagram page, I was showing what I was doing. I would celebrate my client's success and do everything. And it was kind of like, if you build it, they would come. Yeah. So it's like, I would be doing client delivery modules to make sure that I was giving them the best experiences possible. I would be doing check-ins and improving. And then those clients, because I gave them such a good experience, actually went out and told other people in the community. And it became this beautiful thing where I really just have to keep showing up as my authentic self and clients come to me now. So Rob, what do, uh, what do your teacher, what do your fellow teacher friends say about all this? I mean, this is like, it's probably so beyond their scope, They're right? Jealous. <laughs> They're jealous. They're still working parking lot duty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, I have to say, I have really supportive colleagues. Like I joke about the jealousy, like when my colleagues have been so supportive of me because they knew me at 365 pounds. And they knew me when I was like struggling to get up the stairs to my class. And now I'm sprinting past kids. I'm swatting, swimming and getting through, you know, I would look like Lawrence Taylor out there. Uh, hey, I'll cool. give you a little bit of credit <laughs> on it. I didn't use Reggie Blake. Um, but yeah. it's one of those of like, they saw me change my life and they were so supportive. And it's the same thing with like my wife and kids. Uh, I'm a dance dad. Dance gets more expensive every month. And my wife would joke of, like she would bring in the bill and I'd be like, yeah, got to sign two more clients to make this work. But we built this beautiful life that we can get my daughter off to dance. I can go to Starbucks while she's warming up. I can do coaching calls. I can program out clients. I can get nutrition stuff together. Then I can show up to their events and I can work from anywhere on the weekends as opposed to being stuck in a freezing cold parking lot, getting my stuff done. So like even this summer, I, I get to take my kids to gymnastics. I get to take uh, my kids to dance. And then I go, I work, I show up, I cook dinner. Uh, I really get to live like the best lifestyle possible while helping my clients achieve their goals and my family live a great life. It's everything I ever want. Man, you're, you're super dad. And we're going to get, we're going to get into that too in a minute, because I do think the family tie is, is, uh, really impactful for the listeners, but I do have one question that I wrote down. Um, and I don't want it to slip away. So you mentioned that in the beginning, you had a lot of self-limiting beliefs, but you also mentioned in the beginning that you got massively resourceful to make this happen. In order to get massively resourceful, it's kind of a paradox, right? Because you have to be very confident in yourself to be massively resourceful, yet you say that you struggle with the self-limiting beliefs. Talk me through that paradox. Like, how does that even work? I have self-esteem issues. I'll, I'll just put it right out there. Uh, you know, there's days I wake up and I still think I'm a 365 pound person. There's days I wake up and I have no idea if I'm even being a successful personal trainer or a nutrition coach. There's days that like I have a cold sweat of, uh, you know, like I own a business. Like yeah. I am responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of a full business while teaching. Um, I'm going to go back to football because that's, that's kind of what I love in my spare time. But you know, fear can be an interesting thing. Um, Jerry Rice in his Hall of Fame speech, greatest wide receiver of all time, uh, talks about like, what was the thing that drove him the most? It was fear of failure. And it was one of those things that uh, I didn't want to go back to being 365 pounds. I don't want to go back to having six figures of debt. I don't want to go back to having a bank. Like, I don't want to have a bankrupt business. So every day when I wake up, I, I realize I have a responsibility to my wife, my children, my build business, my clients. And a lot of that really does motivate me to be good. Um, but at the end of the day, I still have those beliefs. I think one of the big things that clients need to understand is you're going to struggle with imposter syndrome in your first month, your 15th month. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure five years from now, I'm still going to struggle with imposter syndrome. I can validate that. Thank you. And that, that's the point is that feeling never goes away, but how you manage it and how you handle it makes a world of difference. Yeah. And if I sat there thinking I'm only going to get eight clients, I'd probably be struggling with only having four and thinking that's okay. And I hate to say it, but it was one of those of I have bills to pay, I have goals to reach. And when you use those to challenge yourself and get everything better, it 
it comes. Yeah. I mean, the answer to my next question is, does it ever really go away? And the answer is no. no. And the, the next note that I wrote down is life is all about balancing the dark with the light, right? Like fear yeah. is considered like a dark energy, but definitely a motivator and 100% a motivator for me as well. But the light is how you open the call, right? You said you're grateful for everything. You're living the life of your dreams and that pulls you forward while the fear pushes you forward as well. So it's this very interesting dynamic between balancing the dark and the light for sure. Oh, that's great. But I think it, you know, it comes down to the fact that you have to acknowledge that both actually exist. You know, I think when people come on, they say like, oh, it's all sunshine and rainbows. I don't believe a word they're saying. And when people say like they're living in this shroud of darkness or everything is terrible, I don't believe that either. I think it's one of those of when you acknowledge your feelings, your emotions, but you handle them properly, it makes a world of difference. And it's one of the things that I try to help my clients uh, every day in their journeys with is like life is not going to get perfect after you hire a coach. Life is not going to get perfect after you open a business, but how you handle those challenges are all the more rewarding. So yeah, hundred percent. Let's get back to super dad. So obviously it sounds like you have an amazing, <laughs> you have an amazing family and you have an awesome daughter who's also into athletics. You mentioned dance. What does she think of what dad's doing right now? Uh, I have two daughters. So it's nice. um, Allie. My oldest is 10. She is in fifth grade. So she is in that full stage where uh, one moment she is so thrilled to death with me and other minutes she's ready to throw rocks at me. Um, <laughs> but she she's a great kid. And it's one of those of I'm more present for her and Stella, my youngest at seven, of I can now come home every day after school and pick the girls up. I can make their lunches with them. We can have a conversation about how their day is. And the beauty is they don't have to see me working the long hours. I'm still putting them in but I'm doing it around their schedule so I can show up for them. So I can have the intentional conversation when I'm dropping them off in the car line. And then I go into Starbucks and I go work on an hour on modules or I work on client programming. And then I pick them up and they see that other part. Um, they do have the understanding. You'll see that I'm recording from my glorious basement. Uh, <laughs> so when the door to the basement is shut, they're like, that is recording or working. So it's like the do not disturb light is on in the house. But it's a great balance. If you make it and you get intentional with your time, it's a really good balance and a great opportunity. Two part question. Um, part one, what does that mean to you? We now know what it means to your daughters. What does that mean to you? Part two is uh, we speak to a lot of parents every day that say they can't make their dreams happen because of their parenting obligation. Uh, my second part to that question would be, what would you say to those individuals? See, here's the problem. I, was, I got like a guppy mind. What was part one again? That I got out? <laughs> uh, what does it mean to you that you get all this intentional time with your daughters? Um, I'm never going to get it back. It's the reason I got bariatric surgery. I was essentially told uh, I was burning out a medical grade CPAP and that my sleep apnea was so bad that one day I was going to fall asleep and probably not wake up. Uh, when you're told that at like 35, and that it could be any day, you, you change how you view everything and how you attack them. So it's one of those, like, I am super intentional with my Google calendar. I think I can put uh, my coach, Emily, uh, I can stand toe to toe with hers. Uh, there is very little <laughs> white on my calendar and it starts from 5 a.m. till 9 p.m. But if you want to show up for your kids, and this is what I'd answer to anyone who says they're too busy, are you really using every hour of your day possible? Um, one of the things when I started NLCA is I didn't want to be the person who gave up their fitness to get back into work. I had come from that lifestyle beforehand, and that's how I got to 365 pounds. And I wasn't going back to that. So it was one of those of that meant I was waking up at 445. I was then lifting and getting my workout done before I taught a full day of school. Then when I came home from school, I'd pick up my kids. I would pack lunches, get everything done. If I had a prep or a study hall, I would have the kids working on their stuff while I was working on stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That also meant that after I put the kids to bed or after my wife got home and we had dinner, it was a very intentional dinner of we're talking, we're engaging with each other, but then it's dad's going back downstairs because dad has to work, but I had still shown up for that. Uh, it was a challenging day. I'm not gonna lie. I cried a lot in January and February starting a business. But it, it's a labor of love like anything else. And it's one of those of like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's easy. And if a parent here is listening to this, you need to understand that like raising a business is just as hard as raising a child. Um, 
yeah, it, it really became my third kid and it taxed me mentally, physically, and emotionally, but I'm so proud of all three of them. The kids a little bit more than the business, you know, because I think that's what we're supposed to say, but it's, uh, <laughs> you know, like it, it's rewarding. And it's one of those things, like I look at where I'm at now compared to five months ago and I could have never imagined. A lot of it comes down to, obviously I don't have kids yet. Plan is to have kids in the next few years. I have my one kid, NLCA, and I have yes. my, my wife as well. Um, but I think it comes down a lot to uh, setting expectation and communication. I'm assuming yeah. the communication level you have with your wife and your kids is probably very on par. Uh, but they're not easy conversations, I would assume, either. No. What would you say to the business owner that is trying to create the space to grow their business, but is currently viewing their family as a roadblock and needs to have a, a few of those hard conversations? You already said it. It comes down to communication. Um, I hate to say it, but no, I don't hate to say it. We have Google Calendar time on me and my wife's calendar where we literally sit down and plan out the next week and we plan out our finances and budget. And it's almost like an operating meeting for our entire family unit. And I, I swear it gives us our success. We don't like doing it, uh, but it's like anything else. The rewards we get out of it are good. It's one of those that like, we've had to have difficult conversations, me and my wife, and I love her to death. She's been an amazing partner and I couldn't have done it without her, but she's really understood like me not showing up to certain things in the last couple months is because I'm trying to build something better. And as we're going into a summer where I don't have to work uh, dead end jobs, I just have to show up and she can focus on her stuff it's made a beautiful balance, but it comes from a lot of difficult conversations we both had to have of what do we want out of our lives as husband and wife? What do we want out of our lives as parents? And what do we want our balance in our family to look like for not just the next five months, but the next five to 10 years? Yeah, I'm very impressed with you, Rob. You're kicking ass. Oh, You're stop. Kicking ass. Um, transitioning gears here a little bit. Obviously, you've had a great experience in MLCA. You work with Emily, who's a total rock star. You forexed your goals. You went from thinking you can sign eight to 24 clients in a six month time span, or maybe even a little bit less. Um, what are your favorite aspects of NLCA and what do you feel like has helped you the most? I like the evolution. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I love everything you added into the 10K accelerator. Um, I think it's one of those things that I've appreciated that you've been very honest and open about these are the changes to the fitness and nutrition industry with chat GPT, with changing media and everything else. And the fact that this doesn't feel stale and continues to grow. Um, one of the benefits is I am also, uh, with the money I made from NLCA, I am finishing up my certification uh, with other programs. And I will say the learning modules in NLCA are probably better than the ones I'm getting in the other program. Oh, hell yeah. That's yes. awesome. And it's, I still use those notes with everything I do. Um, yeah. The live uh, calls are always good as well. So it's, it's a nice experience that I've had. Nice. That's amazing to hear. Talk, talk about your coach, Emily. How is she doing? The best. The best. Um, she gets me. Uh, I think a lot of the times like we, and it goes back to communication with people. Um, when I really explained to Emily that my goal isn't really to quit my job, but to have this beautiful balance, she really listened to that and tailored how my experience through NLCA would change from mm -hmm. all that. And that was probably the most valuable thing ever. She really listened to me about, look, if you're going to keep your job, we need to find a lower level ticket that can kind of catch all these clients because you're going to have a limited client roster. So she's really helped me craft and build this perfect thing that's going to really tailor uh, my lifestyle to what I want and what I want to get out of it. And she she's just great. I had a call yesterday with her. So I, I'm, I'm very happy with how Emily has really helped me grow, develop. And I feel comfortable that when I do have struggles with my clients or within the program, I can have an honest conversation of this is where I'm going. And not only does she get it and help me solve it, she also helps me put a system in place so it doesn't happen again. And I think that's that's worth the tuition in and of itself is you're not going to have a perfect business practice. But uh, if you're really open and honest with your coach and you explain this is where I'm having a problem, I can speak personally for Emily. Every problem I've given to her, not only has she helped me solve the leak, she showed me how to build a better pipeline to make it work better. Nice. Let's freaking go. Let's freaking yeah. go. Uh, Strategy-wise, specifically on signing clients, 
uh, what has been the most helpful for you? I really think just being your authentic self. Um, I really do uh, with my stuff is I kind of do more of a clarity call where I dive deep uh, for like a 30 minute call. And I really take a bit of what you did and show in the modules and a little bit of what I do to put my own personal spin on it, which you talk about and develop this way of like, if you're really listening and understanding, uh, you can help develop. And like one of the proudest things that I had was actually from talking to a potential client two weeks ago. Um, we had this deep dive talk about everything and I realized I'm not the fit for her, but I knew who was. And because I was able to gently walk her over to where she would do have a better fit, she then in return told two other people who then in return uh, DM'd me and started in the process of maybe signing another client. So it's when you show up authentically and you show that you're actually trying to care and help people as opposed to selling, I just think it works so much better. And that's something that I think when you start the modules and you think there's some beliefs that selling can be icky, but when you really get into the idea that the modules and you really preach of, you're really providing a service to help people. And if you really look at each call as a chance to help people authentically, and that might mean you don't sign them to yourself, you send them to somewhere else, it does help your standing in a community to know that this person's trying to help in the best way possible. And that's been my goal since day one of starting a coaching business. Is that one of your company tenants? Be authentic? I still kind of write all my company tenants. <laughs> well that should definitely See, not perfect people yeah definitely not perfect uh myself included you you should definitely make that one of your company tenants i would say yeah um we're approaching the end here where can people find you and then i'll ask my last question my weight is history on instagram is the best place to get me uh feel free to ask reach out uh for any help i also have my website www.busybariatrics.com because if you haven't been able to figure out from this podcast I'm too busy for most things, but like most people say, and what Chad's been talking about, um, people think they're busier than they are. And one of the things I'm really proud of is teaching my clients, like when you get super intentional with your time and you put your priorities in order, you're going to find you have the right time to make the success. you. 100%. Rob, last question for you. There's a lot of people listening who are on the fence about starting their entrepreneurial career. It doesn't even have to be with NLCA, just in general. What would you say to an individual that's nervous to take that leap? If you do it, you got to do it at 110%. You have to really dive in. And it's just like anything else with fitness or nutrition. You're only going to get the results that you put the work into. And the more you put the work into and ask for help and find the right ways to do it, the better your results are going to be. You heard it here first, guys. That is Rob. Rob, this was a fantastic podcast. If you guys did enjoy this one, screenshot it, tag Rob, tag myself, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.